once a cat has been on a steady dose of methamazole uh, or carbamazole, any form of the medication, for three to four weeks, it's time for a retest. And on the first retest, you really need to do the full blood panel and the CBC, which is the complete blood count. That's the part with the red blood cell numbers and the white blood cell numbers. And there are five things that you need to particularly look at. Of course, first is the T4. And you're hoping for a nice drop towards the mid-normal range. Uh, you're probably not going to hit it on the first try. You just want a nice drop heading in that direction followed by a cautious increase in dose if necessary. You're also looking at the creatinine, the kidney, primary kidney number. Uh, it will quite probably come up as the T4 goes down. With a little luck it only comes up a little. But you need to see just how the kidneys are reacting. But keep in mind that if it jumps all the way into the chronic kidney disease range. That doesn't necessarily mean the cat has chronic kidney disease. Uh, it may actually be an acute reaction uh, from dropping the T4 either too far or too fast. You won't really be sure of the kidney health until uh, the T4 has been in the mid-normal range for a while. You can make good guesses. Just don't overreact. Now the other three things that you're looking for all involve allergic reactions to methamazole that only show up in the blood tests. They're uncommon but they are serious. The good news is that you cure them by stopping the methamazole. Uh, you don't need you know necessarily any other medication. Uh, so you want to look for these changes. The first one is in the liver enzymes. Now it is common for liver enzymes to be elevated just because of the hyperthyroidism. So that you're not just looking to see whether or not they're high, you're looking to see have they gone up or down. Uh, ideally, if they were up before they should come down with the T4, although sometimes they come down a little slower than the T4. But if there is a significant jump in any of the liver enzymes, then you have to worry about it being the allergic reaction. And don't let the vet get too excited. Don't let them jump to some liver disease that requires expensive tests. And if there's a really significant jump, don't let them convince you to stay on the methamazole. You want to stop and see what the liver enzymes do just from being off the methamazole. It's also possible that the, any of the red blood cell numbers may go down. Again, just because they go down doesn't necessarily mean it's an allergic reaction, especially if perhaps they were slightly high before due to some dehydration that may have cleared up. But if those numbers have moved down near the bottom end of normal or below normal, then you need to consider stopping the methamazole because the cat is becoming anemic and it will just get worse. It's also possible that the white blood cell numbers will go down. Uh, this is an effect on the bone marrow again an allergic reaction to the methamazole. Same things just because they're down a little uh, you know if maybe there was a slight infection before or an extra stress reaction but if they've gone down to near the bottom edge of normal or below then you need to stop the methamazole and recheck in a couple of weeks to see what's happening. With any of the allergic reactions, you know, with the liver enzymes, red blood cells, white blood cells, there is no treatment other than stopping the medication. 
Milk thistle isn't going to take care of it. Pet tenic isn't going to take care of it. If it is an allergic reaction to the methamazole, you have to stop the methamazole. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop it immediately. This is something that, if it's going to happen, it usually shows up on the first retest. Sometimes it takes a little longer, or sometimes it's just a slight reaction and you need to uh, continue and retest again and see if you, know, you have a pattern. Just don't wait too long. Uh, if you keep an eye on things, everything should be fine. You just have to find a different treatment method. If you let it go too long, any of the three allergic reactions will be fatal. I don't want to scare I do want to scare you. I want to scare you just enough that you take this seriously. And even though all of these are established and known, it is one of the things that vets sometimes overlook. Unfortunately, vets are sometimes in too much of a hurry to look as closely at the blood tests as they need to or to compare these numbers to the previous numbers. That's your responsibility. Always get a copy of the blood test. Ask for the exact numbers when they call for the initial report. But insist on a full copy of every blood test done. And take the time to look them over if you join the Facebook group Hyperthyroid Cats, we can help you there because until you get used to reading these, they're confusing. There are also some good websites out there that can help you uh, understand the tests or help document some of what we're telling you. But just keep an eye on things, be patient. I know money can be tight, but you're not saving money just by testing the T4 only on that first retest. There comes a point where you can get away with that if need be. But on the first retest, you need the full blood panel and the CBC and a copy. Hope to see you in the thyroid group if you need to be there. Hoping, of course, that everybody stays healthy and you don't need our help at all. But if that were the case, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So good luck, be patient, and say hello to the fur can.